In this lesson, we're going to take a look at Bernoulli's principle. Bernoulli's principle just relates how the pressure and speed in a fluid are related. Now, in the 1700s, Bernoulli worked out the relationship between speed and pressure, and essentially it just says that the faster a fluid moves, the less pressure it exerts. This might seem counterintuitive until we think about it a little bit. So what I've drawn here is a tube that's narrowing. And let's say I have a fluid that starts over here and is pushed through it. We know from the equation of continuity that since the area is getting smaller, the velocity must be increasing, which means this fluid is getting faster as it moves through the pipe. Well, that means we have an acceleration, and we have an acceleration because there's a net force, and that net force arises due to a difference in pressure. So the pressure that's pushing this fluid through here, P1, has to be greater than the pressure P2 that's opposing that motion, whether it's the fluid in front of it or whatever. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't get that pressure differential, we wouldn't get the acceleration, and so uh, we have to see that the faster the fluid's moving, the less pressure it's exerting. Now, Bernoulli developed an equation that we can use to solve some problems with this, and we're going to derive that equation using the work energy theorem. Now, uh, we need to remember a couple things. Kinetic energy is half mass times velocity squared. Potential energy is mass times gravity times height. And work is equal to force times displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. And of course, remember the work energy theorem says that the work done is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So let's get this started by looking at a couple things. Um, we have a tube that's carrying a fluid and this fluid is being pushed from by a pressure along this tube up to another spot here. So it's gaining potential energy um, and it's getting narrower which means it's getting faster so its kinetic energy is changing as well and we know that the pressure here has to be different than the pressure there. So work is done on the fluid um, to make it move up to here, but work is also done by the fluid to displace the other fluid out of the way, and gravity is doing work on it as well. So we're going to find all the works that are done. So we're going to start down here, we're going to see the work done to the fluid by this pressure, or that force acting on that area. So what we have is the work at point 1 down here, I'm going to call this point 1, and this up here is point two. We're going to consider how this fluid moves. Um, so the work at point one is equal to the force at point one times delta x. Uh, and this is delta x one. So work is force times distance. Those are in the same direction. Not a big deal. Work two, though, on the other hand, this thing has a force exerted back on it um, because it pushed the fluid out of the way. So work 2 is equal to negative F2 delta X2 and then we also have the work done by gravity. The work done by gravity is equal to MGH except that here we're moving uphill not downhill so the work done by gravity is negative and I don't just want to use H I want to use H2 minus H1 the change in height. So H2 minus h1 and again this is negative because gravity's down but the fluid is moving up. So now we're actually going to rearrange these a little bit and get them in terms of pressure. So remember pressure equals force over area so that means force is pressure times area. So this is equal to p1 a1 oops that's an a a1 delta x1 this is equal to P2 A2 delta X2. Again, let's keep our negative. And this is equal to uh, negative mg times H2 minus H1. So nothing changed there. Now we're going to put all this together using the work energy theorem, which says the work done, the net work, is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So really what we have is we have work 1 plus work 2 plus work done by gravity equals change in kinetic energy which equals one half mv squared except we have two velocities right we have v1 and v2 so I have one half mv2 squared minus one half mv1 squared. Now we are going to change some things up a little bit. We're going to start using pressures and densities and so we have rows floating around in here. And when we do that it's pretty important that we don't get our pressures mixed up with our densities. So we'll be paying extra special attention to that. 
All right, so let's go ahead and move to a new slide so we can have some some work to do. All right, so first thing we're going to do, uh, like I said, we have W1 plus W2 plus WG equals, equals delta KE, which means I really have pressure 1 times area 1 times delta X1 plus pressure 2 times area 2 times delta x2 but remember this was negative um, plus mg times h2 minus h1 but again remember this is negative equals um, one half mv2 squared minus one half mv1 squared all right, so is there any simplification we can do to that? Yeah, there is. So let's go ahead and simplify a little bit. So P1, A1, X1 minus P2, A2, X2. And I drop my deltas just to make the notation a little bit uh, cleaner. M minus MGH2 plus mgh1 as we distribute that negative through there equals one half mv mv2 squared minus one half mv1 squared now we're going to make some substitutions uh, and also notice some things about volume so right here I have the mass of the fluid right here I have the mass of the fluid and I don't know that I really want to have mass instead what I want to have is I want to have a relationship with volume and the reason I want to have a relationship that includes volume is because if I have area times height here that's a volume and I have area times height that's a volume and those are the same volumes so if I can get some volumes to drop out of this then I'm gonna have a cleaner nicer equation so remember um, density rho is equal to mass divided by volume so if I replace this if I take mass mass is equal to density times volume so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make that substitution so I have P1 a1 x1 except instead of a1 and x1 I'm gonna use just V because a1 and V or a and x is V so pressure times volume minus pressure 2 times volume and these are the same volumes minus and here I'm going to make this substitution mass is Rho times volume so minus Rho times volume times G times H2 plus same thing rho times volume times g times h2 or sorry h1 equals and then I still have my change in kinetic energy uh, equals one half and again I can change this so that it's not just um, mv squared I'm going to use the volume again so I have mass which is rho times volume so one half density times volume times velocity squared so don't get volume and velocity screwed up minus one half mass uh, except rho times volume times velocity one squared well this is happy because volumes here and volumes here and volumes here and volumes here volumes here volumes here so those all go away so now I have pressure one minus pressure two minus and this is rho gh2 plus rho gh1 equals one half rho v this is a rho rho v2 squared minus one half rho v1 squared all I'm going to do now is put all the one terms or the initial terms on the left and all the final terms on the right. So P1 is good. It's already here. So P1 uh, and then this is going to get added over to the other side. This is going to get added over the other side. But here I have that. So pressure 1 times rho GH uh, and then add over this one plus 1 half rho V1 squared equals and now I'm going to have P2 plus rho GH plus um, one half rho V2 
squared. This is Bernoulli's equation. Pressure at the beginning plus um, rho gh plus one half rho v1 squared equals pressure at the end plus rho gh. Oh, I forgot my two here uh, and my one here, right? Change in height plus one half rho v squared. A lot of times if the height of the fluid isn't changing then these two terms drop out because both h's are the same you can subtract them uh, and so this equation is is very general and allows us to solve lots of problems but it's useful uh, and sometimes we'll, we only need parts of it.